What you see here is a fully 3D printed Miata intake system. You'll notice there is not a throttle body up at the front because each cylinder has its own throttle body. Normally with an ITB setup, you just leave the velocity stacks out in the open because that's the easiest way to do it. They have some filter kits that go across the whole thing and don't provide much restriction. But the reason I went with this plenum setup is because I wanted to retain the option of turbocharging the car because this kit will eventually be for sale once it's gone through all the tests and I know it's not gonna fail catastrophically or in any way for that matter. And I'm not gonna turbocharge this car in particular, but I wanted to retain that option and I want this to be strong enough to hold, you know, decent boost pressures. I couldn't let this whole sequence get completed without mentioning the one thing I forgot, which so happens to be the very most important factor in choosing a plenum setup rather than an open velocity stack setup. You can use your stock MAF sensor. So it eliminates all of the tuning complications that come with an ITB setup and you literally just plug it into your wire harness I think it'll even work with the stock ECU, which is definitely the goal of this design. Um, I'm gonna test all that before I advertise it, obviously. But yeah, plug that in, good to go. Another benefit that ITBs don't have that this plenum setup will is having velocity, high velocity air coming into this volume of plenum when you're at high speeds. So with an open velocity stack design, you're restricted to pulling in the air that's already in the engine compartment. And with this, I'm gonna have a scoop cut out of the hood and the air will be entering this at the speed that the car's going. So at some points when the car's, I don't know how fast it has to be going to get the effect, but once the car is going fast enough, you should have slightly over atmospheric pressure in here, poor man's boost. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart piece by piece and show you what's inside of it and how it came to be. So this is a two-piece plenum. The upper part comes out so you can get in, change the velocity stacks, and then so you can screw the lower plenum into the throttle bodies themselves. I incorporated a feature here to make it easy to pop this thing off because it's designed to be used with regular silicone. So you can put a screwdriver in here and pop it off without damaging any of the sealing surfaces in the process. So let's go ahead and Unscrew this. So here are our velocity stacks. They are removable, replaceable. I'll be able to print these in different shapes and links and designs and they'll be easily replaced. They seal with a little bit of silicone and one screw to hold them in place. Now you'll notice there's some crazy tubes coming off of these things and that's an experimental design that I am going to explain to you right now. I wanna just cut in here and interject for a moment. If you're enjoying this content, if you give me a thumbs up, it like, it super helps me a whole lot because it makes the channel grow and flourish and I can share this stuff with everybody, share information, share products, share knowledge, the little I have. But if you give it a thumbs up, I super appreciate it. All right, we got Kirkland Brand Engineering explained over here. Sorry, Jason, I'm borrowing your YouTube format for a minute. But unlike you, I have to write with my left hand and I didn't go to engineering school. So if any of this theory is based on incorrect engine physics, please let me know. But in any case, this is what I think is gonna happen. So first I wanna talk about a few principles of exhaust scavenging because they apply to this. Now an exhaust scavenging as that hot exhaust is exiting your exhaust valve, going down the exhaust pipe, when it reaches a change in diameter, you have a negative pressure wave that goes back into your combustion chamber and that negative pressure wave, the, uh, the purpose of that is to evacuate as much exhaust from that chamber as it can so that you have more room for air as it enters. When you have the exhaust system dialed in, I'm using very, very non-science terms. <laughs> when you have the exhaust system engineered and designed to optimize performance, you can very effectively change where you see the power on the RPM curve. Now those effects of exhaust scavenging also apply to the intake, it's just not as consequential because the air is at a much lower temperature 
meaning it has less energy in it, so what you do to it doesn't have as much of an effect on the output of the engine as exhaust does. But anyways, it's not worth ignoring altogether. So as you, this is different, this is a whole different format for me. This is weird. It's hot in here too, I'm sweating. Okay, so we've designed this with really long velocity stacks because for the most part, I want low to mid-range performance from this engine. So the reason that happens is because the air in a long velocity stack has more time to accelerate. So by the time the air reaches the intake valve, it has a greater velocity than it does with a short velocity stack. Now, the benefit of a short velocity stack is that it gives the engine a shorter resonant frequency. So when it's operating at high RPM, that negative pressure wave that comes up from the combustion chamber, it doesn't have much time to bring more air into that combustion chamber because that piston is moving a lot faster. So it needs to, be, it needs to have access to the air quicker than a long velocity stack can give it. So those are the basics. What this is, is a Venturi system. I've created a Venturi at the base of the velocity stack. Um, the diameter of this Venturi is still slightly larger than the combined area of the stock throttle body. So I don't think it will create a restriction. Um, if it did, it's not gonna have a positive effect no matter how well it's designed. So I think it's not restrictive. And as the air comes through this, it's going to start pulling air into the velocity stack of cylinder three, which is going to be the next cylinder to call for air. And then the air continues its journey, goes down into the combustion chamber, and as it reaches this change in volume, the negative pressure wave comes up and it finds the venturi before it finds the rest of the velocity stack. As this center section of the venturi fills with vacuum from the negative pressure wave, it pulls air through this tube, which it will be more inclined to do because the air can move faster through this tube than it can through this large tube because the diameter is smaller. And it in turn continues to fill this velocity stack with air. So the theory is by air entering this, the negative pressure wave coming up and drawing air through this tube will prime the velocity stack for cylinder three, which will be the next cylinder to call for air. So when cylinder three goes to call for air, the air will already have some velocity to it. So what I'm hoping is you're going to get the benefit from the high velocity of a long velocity stack, and you're also going to get the benefit of a small resonant frequency of a short velocity stack, because as this pressure wave comes up, it has quicker access to air than it would if the pressure wave had to go all the way through to the top of the velocity stack. <sighs> That was a mouthful. Okay, so what I'm hoping is the effect of all of that put together um, will create more area under the curve. So this black line represents a long runner where you have a little bit better low RPM and mid-range RPM performance and it falls off up top. And this green one represents a short runner where it doesn't perform quite as well all the way up through the rev range until it gets to the very top and it takes off on the long runner design. So what I'm hoping is this will create sort of a nice hybrid between the two and hopefully have more area under the curve than either one of them. But until the car's on the dyno and the numbers prove the experiment, then it's just talk. So we'll do a video like that in the future. We're gonna try a lot of different velocity stack designs and we'll see if this works. So while I'm taking this apart to show you the next piece of the puzzle, I wanna give a shout out to David over at Making for Motorsport because from all the way over there, you have really contributed a lot to this project. I watched pretty much every single one of your videos on ITB setups, especially the video, the generic video about 3D modeling. Uh, that was basically the only 3D modeling course that I've ever taken is that those two long videos that you produced. And from that, I created this whole system. So I just, I just wanna thank you for that. It's really cool um, 
to be a part of the you know the greater community of YouTube and what uh, what everyone's offering to each other so that's awesome so here it is the lower plenum there's really not a whole lot to be said for it you have three screws per throttle body one goes into the manifold two go into the throttle body themselves and yeah sturdy construction it has inserts for the top plenum to go on there and it's sealed just with a coat of your choice of RTV silicone. All right, now let's get into the absolutely most excruciating part of this whole design process, the intake manifold. I've gone through a couple different materials. This is carbon fiber polypropylene. I started out with carbon fiber nylon, which is an excellent material. And the only reason I chose this rather than that is because the material itself is cheaper. And also it's cheaper to print because you can run a much cooler build plate temperature. But it came with its set of problems, that's for sure. So let me unbolt all this and we'll take a closer look at it. the intake manifold yeah this is it this is the manifold the plastic intake manifold that's going to get bolted right to the cylinder head it is carbon fiber filled polypropylene as i mentioned uh, which warps like there's no tomorrow this build this uh ceiling surface was completely warped i had to apply a lot of heat to it to try to form it back into place but in the process of doing that, I could see how well it takes a high heat environment. And it really took a lot to get this to change shape. So that gives me a good feeling about how well it's gonna perform on the cylinder head. Um, most people with, most manufacturers that make plastic intake manifolds bolted to engines, use a ridge on the inside so they can put an O-ring in there, which means that you don't have to put as much clamping force on the plastic, because it really can't handle that much clamping force. But I wanted to go a different way. I wanted to try it with just RTV alone, which does a great job sealing, just because I didn't want that um, consumable item. Uh, since RTV is cheap and plentiful, um, I wanted to, this whole process, this whole car, the products that I make are designed to be really cost effective. So I wanna see if I can get this to work with just silicone. Um, other than that, the only other thing I was concerned about was creep. So over time, uh, it creep happens with any material, but most notably pr plastic because it's a lot softer than metal. Um, over time, the fasteners used to clamp this down will, they'll keep the same position, but the material will actually move away from the fastener to the point where the fastener is not tight anymore. So that's called creep. And in order to prevent that, I'll show you just this first. Um, I had some pieces cut out, a piece of quarter inch steel and a piece of eighth inch steel, and I welded them together, finished them off, and they go around the outside of the intake manifold like so. So the purpose of the top of it is to distribute the clamping force evenly across the whole surface of the manifold, and it has these nice edges so that if the material does want to move, um, it doesn't have a place to move to. It can't ooze out very easily across the sides. So I didn't want to go all the way down because I didn't want any clearance issues. Um, and I didn't want the metal to touch the head before the plastic clamped down all the way. But yeah, I think, uh, think it'll keep it from loosening up. But only time will tell. Um, some long endurance races will tell us uh, whether this thing's gonna hold up well or not. So yeah. That is the piece. So if uh, you've enjoyed this content, check out some of the other content I've done and peace out.